All right, welcome. We are here uh, at the Club Cast as part of Club Fest to interview Eli March and Scrambled James uh, as part of Circus Luminescence. They've been performing together for some number of years now. They're gold medal winning uh, club passers. And we're going to learn a little bit more about their life and how they got started and uh, all the good things about club life as Circus Luminescence. So, uh, Club Fest, real quick, before we get kick off onto this, is happening next weekend, May 23rd and 24th. This interview is a, just a part of Club Fest. So if you haven't already found the event, check it out. It's uh, streaming on multiple platforms. There's workshops. There's a show that's going to happen on Saturday night. And there are so many good things happening. You don't want to miss it. Uh, these guys will be doing some workshops as well. And uh, you'll see their face on Club TV, and uh, they're part of the giveaway as well. They'll be giving away a gift card to their store, and you can win a cool t-shirt. Like the one Scramble's holding up right there. That's the one. Yeah. And uh, so make sure to join us next weekend for Club Fest. But uh, let's dig into this. You guys have been juggling together for how many years now? Uh, the two of us, it's more like five years or so now, um, together, mm -hmm. but really, really more seriously, like the last three years or so, three and a half. Nice. And, uh, you got started juggling. I, some of this, I have some insider info on because we all started in the same place, but yeah. uh, for the sake of everybody tuning in. When did you get started juggling? What inspired you initially? Like, how did you find these crazy art forms? Um, I was first exposed to it a little bit at Oregon Country Fair, um, just as a spectator. And then I went to college at Humboldt State University, much like you two did and discovered the Humboldt Circus, uh, a club there that teaches and performs. And I just kind of fell in love and freshman year started juggling and got really into it all the time. Mm -hmm. That was my intro. And they kind of did shows and we get involved in shows and it just steamrolled from there. Yeah, for... Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the Humboldt Circus, it's a pretty wild organization. It started back in 2000 and uh, really provided a unique outlet. Most of the people that were part of the Humboldt Circus were not theater people. They weren't, uh, they didn't consider themselves entertainers until they'd actually been part of the circus for a little while. And it, you had a lot of people from different fields coming in to, to, play with the circus and learn some crazy skills that all of a sudden you get rolled into this show. And before you know it, you're uh, doing sounds and lights and building this show with a group of people. It's pretty, uh, it was a pretty special thing. I uh, was glad to be part of that too. Nate, you have anything to add? Yeah. Um, I, I started juggling actually in the Humboldt circus and, and really the, the reason why I pursued that was because I saw uh the, your 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 guys' old group, Poetic Motion Machine, juggling in one of the rooms. And I, yeah, walking by in one of the lecture halls and, pe and heard this cool music and peeked in and there was these guys doing these, you know, amazing juggling moves. And I was like, what are you doing? How do you do that? <laughs> Told me about the Humboldt Circus. And then so that week I went to, you know, the Humboldt Circus playtime and then, uh, somebody showed me how to juggle balls and you know then I learned I learned I learned how to do that and that that night and then I went back the next time and learned how to juggle clubs and then the next practice that week the third practice I was taught how to pass clubs and then it was just like game on but definitely the humble circus is like you know the main like that's the reason I juggle anything yeah. now basically so yeah definitely super foundational there yeah Eli do you have uh, an aha moment kind of like that where it just all of a sudden you're like what is going on and I gotta get in on this um uh, there's a couple 
that freshman year of college, the circus paraded into the cafeteria and they stood on the tables and they passed clubs from table to table. And they were like, we're the circus, come play with us. And I was like, that is what I need to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the juggling was fun, but as soon as I started passing, I was like, whoa, this is a whole other level of play and intricacy. Um, so that kind of right away became a fun thing for me. And the next year, I did the parade and got to stand on the tables and pass clubs. It was like, yeah, come join us. Yes. That was one thing that Humboldt Circus was really good about, outreach. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my first was there was a guy standing under the clock tower on campus juggling five balls. And I was like, what are you doing? And how do you do that? Next thing I knew, you and I are passing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so that kind of leads me into a question that I want to get into specifically because it's for club fest. Why clubs? And you just answered that to some degree uh, with the passing element. Obviously clubs are just ideal for passing. What is it about clubs that stands out? Like, why are we having club fest and it's not ball fest? Or <laughs> <laughs> I think we try to choose a better. I mean, it's it, it's really in the in the in the ring of the name there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll take a stab at that first. Uh, for me, and I think a lot of people would agree with this, a club is a very universal prop and it incorporates the concepts that you can learn in staff, in poi, in ball juggling, um, all these different disciplines, dance can come together and be expressed through club juggling and club manipulation, which makes it really universally appealing to a lot of people. Um, so that's kind of a general answer. Um, and then also for me, just passing in particular, they're just so perfect for that. And I was immediately drawn to that. Um, it's much easier to catch a club than a ball. A little harder to throw, maybe. You got to spin, but when it comes to passing, just nothing even comes close. Yeah, when you ask a, a beginner if it's easier to catch, they wouldn't say that. No way. Uh, true. <laughs> I, I sympathize. I know that same feeling. Clubs are just easier in certain ways. And uh, how about you, Scramble? Why do you juggle clubs? Yeah, I mean, definitely the, the ability to pass uh, clubs is what drew me to them at first, but certainly seeing the evolution of uh, being able to to roll them, trap them, you know, use scissors to catch them, like all the all the different ways that you can utilize the club and its shape and its and its weight and the and the and the balanced weight that it has um, to play and then create different shapes and just utilize them to aid your performance and create these awesome images. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's way more dynamic than any of the other props that I've, that I've played with. You can do way more with them. Um, yeah. Put a blade on the end. Yeah. Yeah. Light or like, fire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can do that, you know, but yeah, like Eli was saying, you can, you can do all sorts of staff and poi and, uh, you know, all of these like spinning based arts, you can do all of, a, a lot of those, uh, you know, practices and, and patterns with clubs. Um, whereas with balls, you can't really like spin a ball. Yeah. Cool, like, I'm doing three beat weave with a ball <laughs> while juggling, you know? <laughs> Some would call that a Mills mess. Yeah, they're wrong. Yeah. Yeah, no, no weave with two balls. That's gonna be right. interesting to anybody, right? Well, right. we shouldn't say anybody. There's well, and like you can weave with balls, but doing like a three beat weave, there's nothing to have beats. There's no beats with balls, you know. So, and so, uh, so you learned how to juggle Humboldt Circus. We we were all a part of that whole scene, and. What I want to move into is talking about what it was that made you guys 
individually maybe at first or as a team decide to move toward juggling not just as a hobby but you guys actually have been working professionally as uh, jugglers and circus entertainers for some number of years together and uh, we already mentioned that we had some history doing some passing in the background poetic motion machine never really went that direction as a as a professional team we were just too young and not ready for that kind of commitment um, but what was the point in your life that you started realizing that this is the direction you wanted your life to go professionally. Maybe, uh, Nate, we can start with you if, if you're ready. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, for me, it was, it was late. It was, it was really only about, uh, five, five years or so. It was building as, uh, a way that I kind of made money on the side and, and something that I always like to do for, for, you know, years before that but uh i was really kind of pursuing uh other work related to my uh degree um until about five years ago and then uh about five years ago it just you know it just made me way more happy than any other work i was like this is really what's nurturing my my soul and then also like i make other people happy by doing this and so it just seemed like a overall just uh you know, better for everybody <laughs> than the other kind of work that I was doing, you know? And, and then, uh, and then, yeah, kind of, uh, having, uh, an opportunity to, to get involved and start working with Eli and, and kind of start really putting something together, kind of cemented that in. Um, cause then it was just super fun working with a friend, but also just, you know, kind of, uh, really working with, both of our uh, kind of creative skills and and just like comedic senses, we were really able to create some really fun uh, experiences for the audiences and ourselves, you know? So. Yeah, I like that it was for everybody involved, right? You were having <laughs> a really good time with it and you realized you were making other people have a really good time. You're like, man, I can't, it's hard to find something that is special like that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Teaching is great, and I love teachers, but I was not one. <laughs> <laughs> My destiny. <laughs> How about you, Eli? Um, you know, I'd been building momentum through the Humboldt Circus and Poetic Motion Machine, um, you and Jesse and Steven. And we started, you know, to get a few real gigs. And there was kind of this like, whoa, people are like giving me money to do this. That's crazy. Um, which got the wheels turning. And obviously the fun, like to be in a room full of people and inspire wonder or hear them all laugh, uh, really just nurtures the soul in a deep way. Um, so it was probably around my senior year of college or maybe second senior year that uh, I really realized I was no longer focused on my degree. I was studying environmental science, still passionate about it, but I uh, kind of shifted focus and partly through some mentors. Um, Reese Thomas comes to mind, Charlie Brown, um, and some of these older professional jugglers kind of came to me and were like, or we were hanging out at a juggling festival or whatever. And they're like, yeah, you, you have what it takes. You could do this. Um, and these were people who had made a career out of it already. And so hearing that really kind of lit my fire and made me realize that it was tangible. And <laughs> That's a good word to have early on. Yeah. tangible yeah it seems intangible yeah. and then at some point that shifts and then you just go for it and there's no turning back <laughs> that's really especially because you you uh grew up in the portland area so you were exposed to a few of these uh pretty prolific professional jugglers up there charlie brown and reese thomas and uh i mean i guess by the time we were even thinking about it kurt carlisle was already performing at the juggling festivals professionally totally um not to mention that being the the home base of uh, one of the biggest passing teams that 
still exists and they're not even doing the the work these days um i mean they're not <laughs> they're still working they're still performing but it's a different crew they've act like they've had other people come in to do the same routine uh and my memory is not serving me help me out real quick name caramazos caramazos thank you yeah <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, yeah, the case. Also brings me to uh, Chautauqua, New Old Time Chautauqua. I started doing around that time. Again, kind of the old timers, the some of the flying K's, the Mud Bay jugglers in particular. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Those guys offered a lot of guidance and inspiration early on, which was awesome. Yeah, yeah. the, the Mud Bay jugglers are like yeah. Big shout out to those guys. Big shout out. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Harry and Doug, you know, it's, it's just awesome. They're great. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, uh, let's keep talking here uh, and dig into some of how you guys work together. Right? You've created this gold medal winning routine uh, for the IJA and I'm curious what it's like for you guys to work together because there's a lot of people who might have a passing partner or something, but to like work together professionally, uh, it takes a whole other level of commitment and creative vision aligning. So uh, we know you've known each other since the Humboldt Circus, but uh, what is it like working with each other? Like, are, are there favorite things that you like about working with each other? Are there some challenges that have come up? Um, I know that's a loaded question. There's a lot in there. You dropped the last thing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, Wait, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> I said you dropped in the last gig. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you no, dropped. I don't even remember. I'm just making a joke. Uh, <laughs> I think the most important thing uh, is patience. Um, well, like any relationship, I guess, and uh, and fun. I think um, we have managed to make it fun throughout the whole process, and always manage to come back to that, even when times are frustrating and tensions run high. Um, yeah. I don't know. I could see what Scramble has to say right now. Yeah. Um, I think like to, to answer the first part, like, like what, what makes it work, right? Like what, what brought us together and kind of united us was, was, uh, you know, we finally, like I quit, I quit my job and, and, and we kind of, I figured out a way where I could have more availability and that uh, allowed us to rehearse all the time and like really be able to be like, okay, cool. We're going to rehearse, you know, three times a week. We need to rehearse four times next week. Oh, we have a gig on, you know, uh, Sunday. Well, let's rehearse, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday leading up to it. And like, that was the priority. So like the first thing was just like, we both had the availability, um, uh, to, to really grow, um, our show and our product that we are our entertainment product that we are offering uh, to people, um, and then uh, you know, like going, like working through that. Now that we're like working together all the time, yeah, patience, um, understanding, but then also just like talking about what's going on. You know, I think we we've, we've both done a really good job of just being like, what's what's the deal? I'm noticing, you know, there's there's some frustration or you know, uh, there's, there's these kind of like, you know, troublesome feelings in the air. What, what's going on with that? And then just talking about, you know, what that is. And sometimes it's just, oh, we've just been practicing this one sequence for an hour and, <laughs> and I'm over it. And, and, you know, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's, it's deeper things that, you know, uh, are sometimes related to each other or sometimes related to external things in our life, you know, and then, and then we work through those, you know, as, as friends and, and collaborators, you know? Um, so I think that the, the openness and honesty and just like, just really the, um, vulnerable, uh, the, the vulnerableness of like being honest with your feelings to another person. Um, 
and, uh, and really letting them know where you are um, has been something that has aided us a huge amount, you know? Um, and, uh, and that really, I think is more than anything, our like kind of guiding principle of what helps us, um, you know, work together positively. Like we've, we've never really talked about this exact thing, but <laughs> yeah. you know, it just kind of, it, it just kind of, you know, that's, that's I in my mind that's what makes it work is that we talk about all the things and and just tell each other you know like uh if we hurt each other's feelings or if something's going on or whatever it is and that's just that's just um the way that it is and we talk about it and accept it and hear each other out and uh address it and move move forward you know so um and then and then creatively we both have these great uh vaudeville kind of backgrounds and we love absurdism and silliness and just like really i like something that i think both both eli and i like doing is uh creating a moment where people are laughing so hard and also asking themselves what is going on like in the same moment like is this real and questioning their reality while also doing it in this way that is like just uh, an incredibly hilarious moment that they, you know, uh, are, are like struggling to, to, to comprehend because they're laughing so hard through that, you know? Um, and so I think that's the other thing. Um, and that's a little bit unrelated to, to juggling necessarily, but that kind of uh, just sense of humor comes through in our practices with each other and helps keep it really light and fun. Um, and, and just really silly and creative, you know? So that's part of the answer, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Uh, there, there was a lot of stuff you said early on there about communication that I think is really uh, super important for a team and really good advice for any relationship. So that's awesome that you were able to find it on that level. Now, I know there's, there's quite a number of teams out there who perform together, um, and oftentimes they have some sort of little story about meeting for the first time and like kind of the transition into being uh, performers together and like taking that leap. Do, do you guys have a story like that, or was it sort of so general, like transitional from Humboldt Circus World that you kind of just synced up in life anyway, knowing that you were already fast friends and hanging out a bunch before performing there, there's a story there <laughs> um well you know i mean the first time we met i think was the story you told earlier when you saw me and you jer juggling jesse and steven and i was like oh cool and then uh i guess we should note that scramble was three years behind us in college he's a little younger um, so we weren't really juggling together in college in the Humboldt Circus. It was kind of different generations. Um, then we ended up doing a couple tours together on New Old Time Chautauqua, mm. which really more so built the friendship and mm. seeing what each other was capable with. I don't think we did acts together yet. No, I was doing my my clown act at that time. I wasn't even doing a juggling act in the show. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and I, w I was living in Portland-ish at this time and had moved to Portland for about a year or so. And Scramble just called me up one day. He was living in the Bay and he's like, oh, I'm thinking about moving to Portland. What do you think? And I was like, get up here, let's <laughs> juggle. I need someone who's down to fucking, uh, pardon, throw the things, catch the things, and grind it till we find it. I didn't say it exactly like that, but uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he moved up here. And we started That's working awesome. together. Yeah, and it was it was kind of this cool moment too, where like, yeah, I, I was done living in the Bay Area. The Bay Area was. The, the San Francisco Bay Area was not for me. Um, I only lived there for like a year and I was kind of floating around and yeah, I was in Port Townsend actually when I made the call and, and, and was, was kind of staying there. And, and then uh, when I did come down to check Portland out and kind of look for places to stay, I was sleeping on Eli's couch and uh, 
his one of his roommates came out one morning and was like, oh, I'm moving out. I, I'd love to move out by the end of the month. And it was like the 25th or something like that. <laughs> and, uh, and it was basically like I just got on the phone and was like, hey, I, I don't know. I, I think maybe maybe I'll live here. <laughs> and so I moved into that room. And then so we actually lived together briefly um, when I first moved to town. And that kind of uh, got everything started. And there was one moment uh, after that where, like, I moved to town and there used to be this juggling jam at this yoga studio. And, uh, I, you know, Eli, Eli, Eli and I went and it was my first time going and, and we hadn't really passed that much, uh, up to then it was, you know, I'd only been in town like maybe a week and we went and, uh, you know, we started passing and, you know, we're doing all the two count fun stuff. And then, you know, Eli's like, all right, seven club. And we do the seven club. And he's like, all right, seven club singles. And we do the singles. And he's like, all right, eight club eight catches, throw the triple, pirouette, collect. And we just nailed it like the first time, you know, because like, I, like I had been working real hard um, and kind of, you know, it was, it was there. And, and then he, we collect and he's like, well, you're in the troop if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of like passing the audition a little bit, you know. Uh, um, informal tryouts. <laughs> yeah, but that was kind of, that was kind of the moment where I think he realized he was like, oh, this guy, this guy can do it. This guy is there, you know? Um, right. And so, and that kind of started us on that track. Yeah. You guys definitely have a high level of skill that you, that you push in your routines. Uh, some would say even higher than it needs to be. Um, I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not one of the people. <laughs> higher than it needs to be. Well, you know, um, I'm not one of those people for the record. I, I love seeing uh, public routines not designed for jugglers take it to a level that the public is like, might not even understand. And it, it kind of shows them this whole other, uh, just how high it can go, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you guys have a really unique style too, where traditional club passing uh, there's there's a lot more numbers involved or maybe either numbers passing or maybe using a lot more sight swap type notation coming up with ways to trick the brain more mathematical stuff but uh, that doesn't necessarily read as well for performances and so and you guys have this really unique very northern California style of or northern uh, northwest style of, of juggling that brings in flow arts and just really interesting improvisationally driven uh, material. So like, what is your creative process like um, that, that you think might be different from other jugglers or other passers that have been out there? What makes you unique in that department? Um, <laughs> I think there, there's multiple parts to this answer um and it, it kind of just starts with our background and you know we kind of made our own style in a way coming out of Humboldt Circus and all that the slow and the doctor's attacks and whatever but we I kind of look at it as twofold there's like the experiment time and we just jam and we're very free form and we do whatever happens. And then if something cool happens, we try and remember it and repeat it and incorporate it. And then there's like drill time, which is, oh, maybe it's that thing we just discovered or maybe it's just doing nine clubs or whatever. Um, and so balancing this kind of free form expressive play time where we're usually just laughing our asses off the whole time um mixed with like okay now we're gonna grind and do this thing until it's solid mm -hmm. and then in in that like grind and like you know drill kind of time too you know we have like an outline of what we want to do we're like okay we like this thing that we that we do or you know that thing that we were playing with let's start with that and then it's really like 
filling in the, the essay, if you will, you know, like we have this outline and then we really like kind of hit those points, but then from each of those points kind of stems all these other offshoots of ideas. Um, and we've had to stop ourselves in practice and be like, wait, 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 we got to focus on what we're actually of like our actual routine because we like deviate to this uh, new place that we were taken from our routine, you know, like, oh, well, in this part, oh, what if we throw, you know, uh, uh, triple, triple, triple flash while we switch sides and then we like throw a double underneath the turn around and hit back into, you know, this other sequence, you know, and then that part ends up working out and we put it in the routine and, and there we, there we go. But there's a lot of examples of having ideas like that that don't work out that we, we play with, you know, and then, and then kind of determine it there. But, um, but yeah, having, having the outline and the drill time, but definitely so much play um, is involved in, in the creation process. And then I also think you mentioned math um, and like, I know uh, music is math, but I, I, I think of like hash juggling a lot like I think about music um, and rather than thinking of it as a mathematical formula, I think of it in terms of bars and we have like four, four counts or if you're in two count, you're in two, four time and you have these available bars that you can fill in with whatever, um, you know, flourishes you like. It can just be your like quarter notes where you're just holding the pattern or you can choose to throw in all of these uh, you know, eighth notes, sixteenth notes. You can do you know your whole notes, whatever you want, and it fills in the the the, the sheet of music. Um, which actually, the K's have a great routine. The Flying Care Mazov brothers have a routine called Jazz, where they talk about exactly that, and it's a really funny routine. But anybody watching, that's a great great routine. Um, adding so adding on that is once we become comfortable with the sequence or tricks you start to realize all the space that's in there um and then you find more ways to add extra good details to what you uh, you start with the base concept you get it down and you realize oh i have two beats where this hand isn't doing anything and i can do an active two or i can pirouette or when we switch sides, we can actually do this whole self, you know, finding space and filling it really comes um, only with time. Like you kind of need a semi-finished product first and then it just gets refined and refined and refined, which is an important part of our process as well. Right. Yeah, it's definitely important to start with anything. <laughs> <laughs> and know that you yeah. can always make it better and bigger. Yeah. Cruise. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like what you say about the uh, the importance of that that play time together. It's like it's one person. It's one thing to find somebody that you can work with professionally. It's another thing to find somebody that you have fun with, and to uh, to be able to merge those is uh, something rare. So you get to to be able to uh, to incorporate that all and switch from having fun and to to co collaborating on creating something is uh, is super unique and it's taking you all the way to the top gold medal winning IJA routine that's uh we tried a few times I've, I've been there a couple times <laughs> oh there it is. There it is. yeah I got a bronze yeah. with you Jer yep yep and uh so anything stick out from that experience uh how was it going to the IJA for that gold? What did it feel like to be there on the stage after a, after a successful run? Oh, it was hard to get. It was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, pretty much juggled our bodies into pain and crookedness all spring. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was intense. We had a long run. We got the IJ. And uh but yeah, the same thing. We kind of did playtime, built, established. Finally we were like, okay, let's just this is the song, fill it, drill it, film it. And we kept, you know, rehearsing all the way. Um and then finally getting there, it was just this 
huge ornate theater and uh, nerves were high for sure. <laughs> um, full honesty, it wasn't the cleanest run through. I'd say we were a little overly ambitious. And if I were to do it again, would pick a simpler routine. You kind of touched on that earlier. It doesn't have to be that hard. <laughs> um, but uh, as one of the old pros there said, you had enough in the bank where it was okay. <laughs> Yeah, especially when it comes to something like the IJA, unlike what a public routine might be, you do want to push the limits at the IJA with their categories of difficulty and everything. If you're not pushing it, then you're losing points. So there's a tough balance to strike there. Yeah, and, and we really, like, we worked super hard all the way back into the spring, and we really, we worked... Uh, super hard in involving a lot of acro into the routine, especially the first part of the routine. Um, you know, um, figuring out how to juggle where both of us are in a two high and, you know, uh, doing five club ultimate pattern in a half high, you know, where Eli's above me and um, doing a flag with just a cascade between the two of us. You know, all of that was kind of learned in one season, really. And then Eli learning to pick, to throw me in a, in a, in a laid out uh, pitch backflip, you know, like that was all kind of in that spring season. Um, and then also a, a interesting kind of schedule quirk that happened to us was, you know, being, being entertainers and having the summer be the busy season and having IJA be always in, like the third week of July, which is right yeah, in, the in the middle of the season. <laughs> we had to focus on other gigs for the like two weeks leading up to IJA. So we crammed in the spring and early summer. And then we had to focus on our troop work and the work that was paying us money um, in that like early summer period through kind of the second week of July when Oregon Country Fair is. And then we got on a plane uh, the day after fair. We had this like big long run of shows where we had like no days off for a long time in multiple states and then uh and then yeah flew from you know oregon to massachusetts the day after fair and got there and just basically spent the next three days rehearsing because we hadn't been able to rehearse for like the last two weeks basically on that routine um and so that was a really interesting way to do that that definitely was not <laughs> what we ideally would have done you know we, we had to make it work with the job and with the timing of the festival and everything like that. Um, and also the location of the festival and, and just traveling there and doing all that. So, um, yeah, that was a, that it was, it was grueling. Yeah. Sure. And then, uh, to win was shocking <laughs> <laughs> and, and awesome. I mean, you know, total elation, right. You know, and, and I think, you know, like Eli said, it wasn't our best run of the routine. And I certainly didn't expect to win. I didn't see uh, one of the other team's performance, and I kind of was unsure of our status. And, and given that we hadn't had the cleanest run, uh, hearing our names called as the first place winners was pretty special and, and, and really so amazing. So, right. I'll never forget the feeling. Yeah. And uh, you guys did happen to slip in there to do a partner routine at a really pretty crucial time in the world of uh, glow juggling. And the light up clubs have been around for a while, but you were the first routine to hit the IJA with a vision club routine in particular, which for anybody that knows the vision clubs out there knows they're pretty groundbreaking as far as uh, as far as the light up club goes, it's far from just on or off. It's the, the effects and modes that you can use really provide a sweet secret sauce that few had seen at that point. Uh, yeah. Has, that was... I mean, your name says it circus luminescence. So um, how did that, how's that factored into your whole world of performing? Like how you started circus luminescence even before the vision clubs came out. And I know now it's a, a key part of your whole act. Um, any thoughts on how how that's 
change things or transform things for you? It's definitely allowed us to level up. Um, I mean, it's just so vastly superior to what we have been using and the, the ability to customize everything. Um, and it's kind of funny when you think about the IGA, we were using one of the very first versions. So we had to program each club individually and we were making sure, I remember the night before we had them all over the bed of the hotel room and we were doing one at a time and one of them missed a save and we had to go back. It was so crazy. They've since three hours. <laughs> three hours. They've since made that process super easy. Um, it was just awesome. new at the time. But uh, it's been really great. We have a lot of thanks for Flow Toys for what they've done. Um, both it, like leveling up our troop and our, what we can do with performance and creativity in Club Man, and also just the juggling community at Holt. Um, I feel like more people are juggling because of it and more hours day and night. Yeah, it's definitely changed a lot in that department. I mean, before it was after dark, you were done. You couldn't juggle clubs anymore. Gold balls have been around for long enough, but I remember a few nights at Oregon Country Fair, juggling glow balls late into the night, trying to pass them like there were clubs. And uh, it was a lot wow. harder. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can juggle anytime you want. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, oh, that that reminds me, quick interjection for the, uh, for the uh, giveaway for Club Fest. We actually are going to have a set of three vision clubs that have been donated by Flow Toys as part of the giveaway. Um, all you'll have to do to sign up, or all, all you'll have to do to enter the giveaway is to make a really simple short video about uh, what, how, to show your love for clubs. Then that is a really open-ended question. You could juggle for 20 seconds. You could gush about clubs. You could talk about your favorite inspiration, club juggler. Um, it's really up to you. And so I know you guys don't need them, but. For the folks viewing, know that that's part of Club Fest. So make sure to come and uh, start thinking about what might inspire you uh, around Club World that you might make a quick video about. The videos will be 30 seconds or less, and you just share it. It's just a way of uh, getting the word about Club Fest out there. So hopefully, we get a lot of people uh, getting in on that. Um, but to continue along, uh, I want to talk a little more professionally, like what those other gigs are that you guys do like what uh what kind of market have you been in what kind of market were you hoping to be in before this crazy pandemic happened i knew you had been going to some new conventions and uh planting some new seeds obviously a lot of that's been appended at the moment but for now let's pretend that it hasn't and uh like well what was your summer gonna be like what were you guys gonna be doing <laughs> that hurts, doesn't it? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. it was last summer. <laughs> um, um, it's really pretty varied. I feel like we are kind of all over the map. Um, we do solo, duo, troop. Um, I guess we should know it hasn't really covered Circus Luminescence. We run it, the two of us, but it's kind of we have core a core four members with Ali and Ken, um, and sometimes more people, bigger ensembles, sometimes a band. Um, but over the last two years or so, kind of since the metal, we've started doing a lot more duo stuff, um, mostly just because we've made the time and had the drive and it was working and we're just like, oh, let's, let's go all in together. Um, so yeah, it's really kids' birthday parties, weddings, corporate events, festivals, both juggling and music and conventions. Um, so it's kind of all over the map in that regard. Yeah. We had just gone to a NACA convention um, not too long ago, the North American Collegiate Associate Campus Activities. <laughs> we were starting to get leads for that right before you know the pandemic but uh yeah we had a bunch of stuff lined up this summer 
I don't know. Let's let scramble add on. Yeah. So yeah, like uh, everything Eli just said, you know, um, definitely in the summer we do a couple fairs to uh, like the local uh, Rose Festival and everything. Um, but yeah, we just did the the NACA. We just did the West Coast Regional um, in November of 2019, which feels like oh so long ago now. Uh, <laughs> in a giant room with tons of people and tons of sounds and. Um, but that's, yeah, we're trying to get more into the university and college market coming to campuses and doing our show and uh, providing some entertainment for uh, the college kids, um, college kids, college people. Um, and then, uh, and then you get the more they're kids, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, now yes, totally. Uh, and then, uh, and then definitely looking towards the fair market. Um, in the next year, I, I, that's that's definitely been weighing heavy on my mind. Partly due to your success, Chair, it's definitely um, pretty inspiring and something that I'm like, well, that is a very stable market. Um, if you can make it, if you can find your niche and make it stable, then that's that's great, you know. Um, yeah, so, it turns out not so stable in a pandemic. But yeah, you know, <laughs> not you know. Uh, you can say for certain that had this all not gone down, there is no way I would have the time for Clubfest and this. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Silver linings, right? Right. Um, find them somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, so, you know, those, I think it, future direction is more of the university and fair market while having the, you know, kind of, great variety that Eli mentioned as something to supplement those two kind of more touring based things. Um, it's kind of the, the future goals for the performance and where I see a lot of stability with, with income and everything like that, you know, um, cause the sprinkling is nice and, and really varied, but you know, sometimes it doesn't sprinkle as much as we want. <laughs> so pure, yeah. Being purely freelance can, can be tough. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because every show is a little different. Your marketing has to be a little different. Yeah, it's it does help to narrow down to certain things. But having done a similar path, like I, I definitely have done my variety, my variety of styles of gigs. There's also something of a, uh, a refreshing quality to it because you're always doing something a little different. You're always meeting different types of people and. Uh, it keeps it interesting in a way that's kind of fun, even though it has its own challenges as well. Yeah, they're, they're all unique sets of challenges, you know. Mm -hmm. I, something that, that, that you mentioned there is that, the, you know, the different types of show. I think that's something that is really exciting to me about the fair and university market is more of an opportunity to explore our show more deeply. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of humor and a lot of like potential comedy there that we just haven't had the time and reps to really, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of uh, evolution, positive evolution that can happen to the show. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see, we're hitting the uh, we're hitting the 45 minute mark here, but I do have a couple last questions for you. Um, since we're in the, the new world of COVID, how, how are you guys coping? Is it, uh, obviously most events are canceled, so that we can assume that most of the work for the summer has fallen off. Um, but is there anything dramatic that you've done differently to, to cope uh, or to supplement that uh, might help inspire some other entertainers out there? Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I've been <stuck. laughs> um, Yeah, I'll answer a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I know Eli's been doing this too. We, we've both been playing a lot more music, you know, um, and that might not be the juggling centric answer that a lot of that, that some jugglers out there were hoping for, but um, <laughs> like definitely, you know, like we've, we've been playing around a lot uh individually with our with our kind of music rigs and, and setups and just kind of really advancing our knowledge uh in that artistic discipline and, and expression and uh and that's I, I really view that as something that can only 
uh, help our show um, in the long run too. You know, <laughs> yeah. If we can, if we can create, you know, uh, looped tracks live on stage, and then do juggling or comedy or or a, or a synthesis of the two to our own loop tracks. I mean, that's a whole nother uh, ball game and, and, and kind of realm of entertainment. You know, we also don't have to worry about copyright issues then, which is great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's, that's one thing, you know, uh, luckily here in Oregon, they allow surfing still in some places. So we, we you know, going, going surfing, we've both been doing some surfing and, and that's been a great outlet. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, I'm just tuning in to a lot of like club juggling videos on, on online and, and Instagram, you know, and really uh, kind of just taking my practice uh, when I feel inspired and rolling with whatever the inspiration is. I think uh, before I was very like regimented of like, I want to learn these things. I'm going to spend this much time a day. And now uh, I'm a little bit more like, oh, that thing's cool. I'm going to go take an hour or however long I feel like and go work on this thing. And maybe I work on other things and maybe I don't, you know, but kind of allowing some, some, some air and some breath into the juggling and uh, seeing where that space can take me. Nice. Yeah. I've just been trying to practice um, a variety of things juggling being one but also of various props playing a lot of music um some spanish lessons some yoga we've been surfing it's been in and out of existential crisis time <laughs> for sure you know when your whole purpose suddenly goes away it's very confusing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know i'm just thankful to like be stable here for now and take this time to just kind of think about everything and what we're doing here and what our purpose is and how to move forward in a healthy, productive way. Yeah. I don't know quite what it's going to look like yet, but. <laughs> Wavering between existential dread and trying to enjoy this forced vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally both. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes <laughs> many different times in one day experiencing those things yeah yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well partner juggling has been especially hit hard and uh that's that's an unfortunate thing for club fest because i think that we'll probably see something of a lack of uh partner juggling at club fest simply because people are trying to avoid each other which is hard to do if you're partner juggling um have you guys been juggling much are we going to see some uh passing content at all don't worry about Disappointing us. <laughs> I think so. We just uh, passed together for the first time recently. And uh, so I, I expect that to be coming back into full swing soon. We were both like, oh my gosh, it's been so long. <laughs> right. This feels weird, but awesome. Yeah. Um, we just, we just kind of giggled for like, the first five minutes. <laughs> but we're excited to get back into it. So. Yeah. I know we're, uh, you know, we're trying to avoid making exceptions and like avoid contact. You guys are in a pretty unique spot. Like you're not just hanging out to juggle. Like that would be one thing. Like, well, maybe you should just hold off on that for now. But, like this is also your career. And if you're not, if you're not practicing, if you're not working on your show, then you're you're just going to be that much further behind when you actually do start picking it back up again, and so uh, I think I think just about everybody can sympathize with you on that one. Like, got to keep that rolling. We got it. Yeah. 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 And we we definitely took a a, a long time off, um, you know, to to really make sure that uh, we were uh, staying in tune with science and the latest updates too. You know. Um, but yeah, we gotta, we gotta get back to it soon. <laughs> well, uh, we got a few minutes left before we hit the hour mark. I was just hoping maybe I could hit you with kind of a few rapid fire questions, uh, to, to finish things off. What do you say? Bring it on. <laughs> All right. So what do you think is the most important tip you can give 
to a beginning juggler for practicing? Throw. Grow? Throw. Just throw. throw it. Have fun. Drops happen. Don't worry about it. Play your favorite music <laughs> <laughs> while you juggle. <laughs> Definitely the music. Play the music. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've had, you both had a lot of flow arts influence between the circus and the uh, and just being on the West Coast. There's a lot of flow arts happening. Uh, tech or flow? I'm a yes and kind of person. <laughs> I was gonna say I was gonna say toe. Like, can we combine the two? <laughs> I think you need they, both, or it's gonna be boring. Yeah, they feed each other. Yeah. It is the it is the yin and yang. Indeed. Indeed. Um, favorite gig that comes to mind. Pacific Fire Gathering. <laughs> oh, sorry, say again. Pacific Fire Gathering. Nice. For me. Um, just amazing group of people. All the performances we've done there have been, over the last like four or five years, what I would consider my favorite shows. The first time the two of us ever hosted a show together was there. And that, honestly, that kind of launched our duo career oh, cool. um, mm -hmm. so it went so well and yeah, that's a shout out to the flow arts institute and all their events are amazing pacific fire gathering is absolutely a highlight up in oregon on the west coast uh for those entertainers or just hobbyists out there if you haven't checked it out especially as a juggler check it out there's some amazing stuff happening out there fire drums too also in california kinetic fire streaming this weekend actually uh, or sorry last weekend because we're recording this in advance mm -hmm. um yeah good stuff how about you scramble uh yeah pacific fire gathering's great uh we had uh last year we went surfing and got a standing ovation in the same day oh. that was pretty epic because it's right on the beach so we like went surfing in the morning and then performed in the show that night I thought you got a standing ovation for the surfing. I was confused for a minute there. <laughs> oh, no, we're not that good. <laughs> but then I have another show I want to mention. I got, I had a gig, uh, a solo gig at a nudist resort one time. Uh, and that was really a very interesting experience where all of the audience was naked. It was like exactly the thing that people tell you of like, oh, if you're nervous, just imagine them all in their underwear. <laughs> There was no underwear. Everybody was naked. And so, uh, so to end the show, I did a, a, a juggle struggle strip for him because they kept, you know, being like, you know, joking around like, oh, you're wearing so much clothes and all this stuff. And they could tell I was groovy and didn't care. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, and to end the show, I did juggle struggle strip. And so I just, I told him, I was like, I'm going to do my hardest tricks. If I land them, you got to clap really loud. And if I don't, I'll take off a layer of clothing until I'm naked. And then uh, I ended the show, uh, nailing uh, five club, uh, triple pirouette, scissor catch in my socks. And that was <laughs> nice. And then I was like, oh, I'm you still had your socks on. <laughs> Only the socks. That was it. Everything else off first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> and the one other one I'm sure you'll agree is Oregon Country Fair. We do every summer, very close to our hearts. So much magic. Very sad to miss that this year. It was the yeah. Oregon Country Fair that I had my aha, I'm going to do this for the rest of, or as my career moment. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Juggling on the same meadow that the flying Karamazovs used to juggle on, so I was told. And I was yeah. like, this is, this makes me happy. I like this. <laughs> People seem to like this. Um, well, Okay, last question. Last rapid question. This one's for you, Scramble. How did you get Scramble and not me? Uh, my mother had a very developed sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it was from my first circus tour. Uh, you know, uh, I was kind of a little bit of a stumbling, bumbling, you know, rambunctious uh, young 20-year-old. And... Uh, 
moved around quite rapidly a lot of times without even thinking where I was moving to, uh, which might still happen today. Uh, but anyways, uh, we were going on the first circus tour and uh, I was a duo clown character with uh, my other buddy, uh, Miles, and, uh, and I, he was the talker and I was the mute. And uh, he was Ramble the Clown, and I was Scramble, and together we were Ramble, Ramble Scramble the Clowns. Um, and uh, that was the birth, and then the name kind of worked, and my first Chautauqua tour really cemented it in. Um, there was another Nate on Chautauqua, so I made sure to sit right next to him in the circle, and, uh, and, and doing the name circle, and, and he went first, and he stood up, and he said, my name's Nate, uh, I, I juggle. I like uh, playing guitar and wearing tie dyes. He was wearing tie dyes. <laughs> sat, and everybody was like, "Hi, Nate." He sat back down, and so I stood up uh, and I said, <laughs> "Hi, my name's Nate. I juggle. Uh, I like playing guitar and wearing tie dyes." And I was wearing my tie dye shirt, and you know, everybody laughed. And then I was like, "You all can call me Scramble." And then uh, that really kicked it off and changed my life in a big way. Um, all of a sudden, my entire social network called me scramble um and that's kind of where it came from yeah well, it's funny because i've worked with you on a few levels things like uh pacific or uh sorry portland juggling festival and you've helped organize in various ways and uh there's a lot of people who say you're not scrambled like you're very you're, you're really on it so uh kudos for having that nickname and like not it being how you interact with the world in every way, shape, or form, but you like you you're man, you, you, know, manage, you manage it well. <laughs> I've I've grown a lot, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had to I had to shed Doctor Bonkers ever so slightly just to uh, <laughs> right. Couldn't go right. on indefinitely. <laughs> yeah, Eli, Doctor Bonkers March. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, this, this might sound uh, ridiculous, but I kind of get a kick out of seeing some people's reactions uh, when I tell them my name is Scramble. And I think that's why it's hung around so long, is it's another moment where you can challenge reality. Like, why shouldn't that be a name? Um, right. Really examining uh, the roots of that, you know? And, uh, and so I, I think that's really why I've hung on to it, is I like, I like, challenging those people who have such rigid constructs of reality um, <laughs> for better or worse. <laughs> awesome. Well, Hey, you guys, it's been awesome. Uh, we're here with Eli March and scrambled James, and uh, we are doing this as part of club fest. This is uh, a club cast. There's going to be a few others. Uh, club fest is happening um, May 23rd and 24th circus luminescence. Uh, these two right here are going to uh, have raffle items, or not the raffle item, it's not a raffle, it's a giveaway. We're literally just giving stuff away. All you have to do is make a little video. You got a cool t-shirt, you can win a $20 gift certificate along with that t-shirt to their store. Uh, we're going to have the links for everything relating to these two guys and to Club Fest in general in the comments of this video. Uh, if you do want to follow them online or check out their store, their store is at circusluminescence.com. And uh, why don't you guys shout out anything that you want people to check out or follow? Instagrams, YouTubes, Vimeos, whatever. Um, yeah, our Instagram is at circusluminescence. Um, and my personal one is at Eli Juggles. And, and my personal one is at Scramble James just as it appears in this screen, except without the space. Um, but yeah, give us a follow. We post a lot of stuff, um, both individually and as a troop on our Circus Luminescence uh, uh, profile. And that's really where we debut and announce most of our uh, performances or like content, you know, when, when we're creating new things and everything like that, so. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you guys so much. Folks, make sure to come out to Club Fest. It's it going to be a great time and so much good stuff, whether you're uh, a pro juggler and you want to pick up some new tricks, whether you're a hobby juggler or you just want to see something cool and see some cool performers doing their thing. There's going to be a lot of fun stuff going on. So Eli, Scramble, thanks for joining us. My name is Jeremiah. Signing off. Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. See ya. Juggle on.